What is the Upskies, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the GX WrestleCast. We're on episode 100 of my little wrestling recap show, where once a week I go through all of the major WWE and AEW shows, let you know what happened, storyline-wise, wrestling, and at the end of the show, I give out my three stars of the week, awarding my three favorite matches that I watched this week. And if there's any major pay-per-views, and they're big enough, I will do a separate episode for the pay-per-view, like we did last week for NXT Deadline. So, what do we got in tap for this week? We got Monday Night Raw. They are in Cleveland. We got Jay Uso. He is cutting a promo. He is sad that Sami Zayn is injured. Happy he got his yeet back. I didn't know he lost the yeet. That That's news to me. He's been yeeting all over the place. So, I guess it's good he's got the yeet back. He's also excited that CM Punk is here, and he would love to have him on Monday Night Raw. Drew McIntyre interrupts, doesn't want CM Punk, because he will destroy the company from the inside out, like he did with AEW. Now, he didn't say AEW, but that, that was a little bit of me. Now, I love the fan that was behind Drew McIntyre when he was talking. He was just agreeing with everything. He's like, mm-hmm, uh-huh, yep, nope, that, that checks out. That's absolutely correct, so well done, sir. Trash talk leads to a match. We got Drew McIntyre going up against Jey Uso. Drew dominating Uso. He slingshots him into the bottom of the ring. That was impressive. Hums Jey off of the top rope. Uso throws some yeet punches. Drew counters the splash. Hits a future shock DDT. We got a near fall right there. Drew removes the buckle pad. A spear out of nowhere from Jey. Another near fall. Ref is busy with the turnbuckle pad, misses Drew, raking the eyes, nails a Claymore for the victory. Impressive dominating victory for Drew McIntyre, looking absolutely fantastic. He continues to be a dominating force on Raw. Nice resilient effort from Jey Uso. Good opening match, 7 at 10. We have Finn Balor and Rhea Ripley giving McDonough hell for letting R-Truth continually break into their secret, super secret, ultra mega awesome hangout. Gives Priest hell for being a crappy leader while she was gone. Oh buddy, Rhea, you the best. I I love when Rhea is angry, that is awesome. R-Truth is on his way to decorate the Judgment Day hangout with Christmas lights for Thanksgiving. That's Truth's words, not mine. Alpha Academy and the Creeds plead with R-Truth not to do it. You're not in the Judgment Day. (laughs) Funny stuff right here from R-Truth. Oh my goodness. I miss this man so much. Thumbs up. We have Rhea Ripley going up against Maxine Dupree with Ivy Nile. Dupree managing some offense in this match on Ripley. Uh, Both the reactions are pretty funny. Rhea's like, what the fuck? Did you just hit me? And, (laughs) And Maxine's like, oh wow, I just hit you. Oh dear. Ripley, done with this, puts Maxine away in a submission. She taps out. Mommy with the W. Entertaining, quick little match right here. A little bit sloppy, you know, messing up the power bomb and the Hurricanrana. They recovered well. I liked, like I said, I liked the reactions from Rhea Ripley and Maxine in this match. Pretty entertaining stuff. And now, we have CM Punk. He is brought out to the ring, and it is decision time. What what fucking brand are you signing with, Raw or SmackDown? I mean, it's pretty easy to figure this one out. He's on Raw, so, oh, well, let's just get into it. Punk cuts a promo talking about the ghosts he has in Cleveland, a lot of bad memories here. Apologizes to anyone he disappointed for walking out of the WWE and AEW. Punk's new home will be Monday Night Raw. Adam Pearce is a very, very happy man. Seth Rollins, on the other hand... Not so happy. He walks to the ring, has a good long stare at CM Punk. Tells him, don't you dare call WWE your home. Seth tells Punk he hates him. Knows it's his last chance in the WWE and basically in wrestling as a whole. Seth challenges Punk to a match so that he can expose him for the phony that he is. Punk says he's entering the Royal Rumble and just might come after Seth. Drops the mic and leaves. 
solid promo here from Punk, but damn, Rollins cut a way better promo. Definitely, I feel like there's some real hatred in those words from Seth. I don't know too much about the backstage politics with that, but there's there feels like there's something there between Seth and CM Punk. Thumbs up for Seth Rollins right here. Can't wait for them to tear each other apart. Hopefully, they keep it in the ring. Don't do it backstage where no one, you know, no cameras and shit like that. Just be professionals. I have more confidence now that, like, this, that kind of thing that went down in AEW more than likely won't happen in the WWE. They they don't, you know, it's, it's yeah. So, I'm not, not as worried about it. But could it happen? I mean, yeah, absolutely. Moving on. Bronson Reed versus Ivar again with Valhalla. Both men collide into each other on the outside. Ivar with a ridiculous senton dive off of the top rope to the floor. Oh my god, dude. And he just flat backs on, on his... Oh my god, what a nasty landing for Ivar. Yeesh. Huge superplex from Bronson. Shifting the tectonic plates of the earth. Pins and wins with a rare, rare superplex. That's... What is this, fucking Randy Orton Sr. over here? Bob Orton Jr.? Whatever the fuck. I don't know. I messed all that up. A bunch of huge collisions in this match. Ivar taking some really nasty bumps. Really solid Big Hoss fight. We got Judgment Day giving Punk a hard time backstage. Priest waves the Money in the Bank briefcase in Punk's face, saying he's waiting for CM Punk if he beats Rollins. So there you go. Maybe a little foreshadowing. Judgment Day in the ring. They're cutting a promo. Priest and Finn remind us who they are. Dom gets booed mercilessly, and here comes our truth. He arrives. He's confused why he's locked out of the hangout. Damien welcomes Truth into the ring very politely. Our truth suggests they kick out JD McDonough because nobody likes him. Are you are you serious? I like JD McDonough. How dare you? Truth tells close friend Drew, uh, Damien Priest he's got to stop calling himself the boss because it's upsetting Rhea. Damien says, everybody loves our truth except him. Lariat to Truth takes his head off. Judgment Day start beating down our truth Boo. Boo. Creed Bros arrive for the save. They clear out Judgment Day, sending them retreating. Oh my goodness, man. R-Truth is a national treasure. Hilarious segment right here. I, I like Damien being like, oh, just come on in here. Come on in here. I love you, buddy. Come in here. And they kick the shit out of him. Funny segment. Thumbs up. Then we get a funny interaction backstage. CM Punk seeing Kofi for the first time in a long time. He's like, oh, you're making me crazy. Kofi's like, oh, man, I don't do that no more. That was some funny shit right there. We have a tag team matchup next. Chance and Kata going up against Indy Hartwell and Candice LeRae. Women's tag team champions Piper Niven and... Uh, Oh, geez, what's her name? The other one joined commentary. Chance and Carter hit the after-party neckbreaker 450 splash combo for a quick, impressive W. Considering, you know, Chance and Carter are one of the few true tag teams, I think, in the women's tag team division, it's good to see them winning. They're getting a push. They're This is nice. I would like this to keep happening. And, uh, yeah, keep it up. Let's see if they can get a tag team title shot soon. I would imagine so. Imperium being a bunch of jerks to DIY, trying to figure out who their mystery partner will be. Well, we will find out shortly. But first, Becky Lynch cuts a promo, running down their career differences, uh, Nia Jax and Becky's career differences, after Nia Jax broke Becky's nose. Well, we know it went pretty great for Becky. She became the man, she main evented WrestleMania, and all that stuff. And then there's Nia. Well, she got injured, and then she got fired. So... Didn't work out so good for her. Jax arrives to the ring, tells Becky she made her who she is. Becky says, enough to talk, let's fight. Offers up a free shot, but Naya won't give Becky what she wants and leaves without any violence. But some damn fine trash talk right here, especially from Becky Lynch. Really like this. I, I am liking the way that this feud is coming along. Thumbs up. Now we got the trio's tag team match. Imperium versus DIY and their mystery partner... It's The Miz! Of course it's The Miz! Gunther shrugging off Miz, won't bother fighting him in this match. Miz finally gets into the match, locks Gunther in a figure four, putting the champ in a pretty bad spot. Gargano locks in the Gargano lock. Gunther gets out, saved by Vinci. Miz hits a skull-crushing finale. On Geo, hometown boys grab the W, because I think 
uh, I know Miz is from Cleveland, but he, you know, he changed it to Hollywood. And I think they said Gargano is from Cleveland. Anyway, that's pretty key. Solid trios tag team match. Backstage, Gunther is chewing out Geo and Kaiser. The Miz appears, demands a title shot. Gunther says, fine, you get one more and then never again. Oh boy. So probably Miz is losing that match. So there you go. Shinsuke Nakamura versus Cody Rhodes for the main event. We have Rhodes avoids a King Shasha, kicking out Shinsuke's knees. Disaster kick by Cody. We got a near fall. Cody Cutter is not enough. Sets up crossroads. Nakamura counters. Blast Cody with the red mist. And the match is disqualified. Slow-paced match. Crowd honestly wasn't that into it. DK, DQ finish on top. Yeah, this match was pretty meh. Beatdown continues. Here comes the Creeds. Again, just saving everybody tonight. He's They're protecting Cody Rhodes. Cody needs assistance out of the ring. He's blinded by the red. Poison mist. And that's the end of the show. Much better Monday Night Raw from last week, thank God. R-Truth providing the laughs. Rollins, really good promo with CM Punk. I'm liking how that feud is coming along early. And same with Becky and Nia Jax, heating up really nicely. And the wrestling was a lot better this week. Just an all-around, much better show. Good stuff. Seven at the... Now we go to NXT 2.0. We are starting this show out with Trick and Mello walking in together. All seems well. So at the end of de- uh, Deadline, that's what it's called, yeah? We saw Mello like creeping up behind Trick Williams as the show ended, and it doesn't appear that anything happened. I guess they just celebrated. So anyway, they come in together, and then someone sneak attacks Carmelo Hayes. What the heck? So you got to stay out of that parking lot yet again. I just... The doom. It's always doom in that parking lot. So who the heck did it? I At this point, I'm thinking Lexus King did it. So we move on. Cora Jade, she is back. She cuts a promo. Claims she stole the spotlight at Deadline. Uh, not so much, but it was a good show. NXT Women's Champion Lyra Valkyria arrives. She is not impressed about the sneak attack that Cora Jade laid down on her at Deadline. Davenport is next in line for a title shot at Lyra. Here comes Nikita Lyons, goes right for Davenport. Big old brawl breaks out. Nikita and Valkyria standing tall together in a nice start to the show. Cora put back into the championship picture and possibly Nikita Lyons as well, which is good. I mean, Nikita was very, very fastly shooting up the, the rankings before she got injured. Cora Jade was going through a little bit of uh, a moment where she was losing a lot and then she was gone. So hopefully she's reset and looks like she is on her way to the main event again. We got the new North American champion, Dragon Lee. He pays respect to West Lee. Lays down a open challenge for the title for later on. We have a mixed tag team match. It's the metaphor with Jakara, Jackson versus Briggs, Jensley, Jensen, and Henley. I combined their name, Jensley. Cheap shot from metaphor before the bell. Jensen getting isolated. The referee misses the tag to Briggs. Tiffany Stratton shows up running her mouth, takes a swing at Henley who blocks it and goes for her. She gone. No problem though. Briggs goes ham on metaphor, nails a lariat, and grabs the W. Solid, entertaining tag team match. I'm digging these mixed tag team matches with the metaphor. I, I like this. Moving on. Men's NXT Breakout Tournament. Competitors are introduced. And then Lexus King appears and whacks. Of course he whacks Bear Hill with a chair and only Bear Hill. What the heck? So we get into the first match of the Breakout Tournament. Oba Femi versus Miles Bourne. Miles Bourne is in the Drew Gulak's group. I Now I know his name. That's good. Oh, uh, Oba showing off the strength, throwing around Miles. Nice pop-up powerbomb by Oba. Puts away Bourne, advancing to the next round. So Oba Femi is a specimen. This dude is 6'5", 280 pounds strong as an ox he moves pretty good for a big man uh nice showing for miles as well gulak's not going to be happy though but fine match right here not too bad we have tiffany stratton she is venting backstage about fallon henley in an interview she walks away the sex she's like oh go ahead with your question and then she just walks away fucking really funny heel moment right here for tiffany stratton now it's the north american championship match dragon lee defends against it's Tyler Bate. Ooh, that's good. Ooh, baby, let's get into it. 
Nice dive over the ropes by Bait. Does a long airplane spin on Dragon into a driver. That was dope. Thumbs up. Tyler eats a suplex. Comes back with a rebound lariat. A near fall right there. Lee counters Tyler Driver 97 into a roll up. Another near fall. Dragon counters Bates Lariat smoothly into the Operation Dragon, pins and retains the North American Championship. Very good effort here for Tyler, dominated the first half of this match. Dragon showed his durability, he battled back, strong chemistry in the ring. I I would like some more of this please, and thank you. Seven and a half, at then. We have Briggs, he wants to chase after the Heritage Cup. Jensen has his concerns. But he backs up his buddy as well as Henley. So teasing a little bit of ch- attention here. Maybe some jealousy between Briggs and Jensen. So we'll see how that progresses. Now we have apparently Ava Rain is uh, like the co-GM now. She's like making de- decisions and shit. So Ava talking with Lexus King says she's replacing or he is replacing Bear Hill in the tournament. And yes, I am pissed. I was rooting for Bear Hill, damn it. Die Jack versus Eddie Thorpe up next. Little brawl around the ring before the bell. Die Jack is busted open on the side of the head. I have no idea what happened there. Rams Eddie's head into the corner of the rope, and the rope explodes. The whole top ring rope thing just absolutely comes undone. Everyone's a little bit confused. And then Die Jack uses the busted rope, wax Thorpe, and the match is disqualified. So, at this point, I have no idea if that was supposed to happen or not. Regardless, it seemed to work out pretty decently. Uh, adds more intensity to this bad blood. Dijak comes back to drop Thorpe onto the busted corner post. Damn. That was pretty neat. Uh, again, I have no idea if they meant to do it. If they meant to do it, well freaking done. And if that was a mistake, well done. No one got injured and you covered for it very nicely. Chase U, they have raised some money for the debt doing a bake sale and a car wash they raised almost three hundred dollars now that's not even close to covering the multiple multiple hundreds of thousand dollars in debt but at least they tried duke calls out mr chase for looking like shit which he absolutely does scripts appears with a briefcase gives it to mr chase and leaves don't trust it mr he's gonna trust it and it's gonna be bad we move on. Men's breakout tournament. We have Keanu Carver versus Riley Osborne of Chase U. Very cool. Stiff Lariat from Keanu throws Orb- o- Osborne across the ring. Riley fights back. Corner drop kick and then runs into a wicked pounce. Hell yeah. From Carver. Somehow Riley survives that. Nails a picture perfect shooting star press. Pins and advances. Damn. Always going to be a fan of anyone who uses the pounce. Uh, Keanu Carver, man, he's a big guy as well. Well done performance, a little bit stiff in the ring, I like that. Showing the strength and the speed. And Osborne, reminiscent of a young Miles Bourne. Like, fuck it, oh, he just, he looks like him, he moves like him. Nice high-flying ability and speed. Nice mix in the ring. Good match right here. Seven, at ten. We have a tag match up next, Nikita Lyons with Lyra Valkyria versus Blair Davenport and Cora Jade. Nikita gets her revenge on Davenport. Paxley appears in the crowd with a feather or some shit. I don't know. Things break down. Nikita loses focus, takes out Blair, who isn't legal. Cora sneaks the pin on the champion, grabbing a huge W. Classic Cora Jade right there, getting that sneaky W. Nikita Lyons fired up performance. Uh, Really good to see her back. She looked good in the ring. Fine match overall, Paxley being really weird, creeping all over the champion. I have no idea what is going on with Tatum Paxley. Alrighty then, speaking of weird, we got Joe Gacy with a cup of Joe, talks to Joe Coffee about coffee. So yeah, that was interesting. Men's Iron Survivor, Trick Williams is welcome to the ring, respects all of his opponents, but now he is ready to become the champion. NXT champion Ilya Dragunov arrives, says he is so proud of Trick Williams. Aw. Little bit of a friendly trash talk is interrupted by Carmelo Hayes. Who knows who attacked them? Oh, Melo accuses Dragunov. Dun, dun, dun. Lays down a whole conspiracy theory. Dragunov denies these claims, tells Trick to rein in Melo. 
Carmelo loses it, takes Ilya's title, but accidentally smacks Trick with the belt. Oh, dear God. The crowd starts chanting, Melo's guilty. And my goodness, can things get any worse for Carmelo Hayes right here? Oh, my. And that's the end of the show. Pretty good NXT after the pay-per-view. Cora Jade making her impact already. Tatum Paxley is confusing me. I have no idea what's up with that. The breakup turn the breakout breakup breakout tournament is off to a good start. Same with the Dragon Lee North American Championship run. Carlos or Carmelo's slow descent into chaos has been a lot of fun to watch. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be really interesting to see where it goes next. Seven out of ten, good NXT. Okay, and we're doing things a little bit differently this week. We're going over to AEW Dynamite. And winter is coming, everybody, at Dynamite in Arlington, Texas. Goddamn, we got Samoa Joe cutting a promo. Detective Joe is on the case, recognizing the beer bottle that was smashed over MJF's head last week was a brand that Hangman Adam Page drinks. Bump, bump. Bum, 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 bum. The cowboy comes to the ring, gets in Joe's face about it. Roddy yelling interrupts the interrogation. Hangman drops Roderick with a punch. This makes me happy. And now we have a match about it. It's Adam Page versus Roddy Strong. Hangman, nice dive to the outside. The kingdoms with shenanigans help Roddy gain control. Roddy drops Hangman back first onto the steel barricade. Just, oh my god. Goodness, man. I think that was happening during a commercial break. Like, goddamn, they don't miss anything. Roddy hits an angle slam into a tiger driver into the stronghold. Hell of a combo. Hangman wiped out, or he wipes out the kingdom with a lovely moonsault dive to the outside. Roddy avoids a buckshot, but he doesn't avoid the dead eye. Hangman pins and wins. Really good opening match right here. Tons of big offensive maneuvers on display. Lots of counters, heavy chops. I mean, Roderick Strong's got some heavy chops, man. His shit is good. It was a pretty long match, but it had a good pace to it. I wasn't bored. Enjoyed the chemistry between these two wrestlers. There was a lot of shenanigans, but it didn't ruin the match for me. Like, Hangman still won, so it didn't bother me too much. Seven and a half at then. We got a Continental Classic Tournament match. Brody King with six points going up against Andrade. El Idolo, six points as well. This is a big matchup. They go chop for chop at the beginning, and oh my god, it is gruesome. I mean, Brody has some of the nastiest chops, and so does Andrade. You combine it, and oh baby, I was in heaven. Andrade, moonsault to the outside. King squashes Andrade into the chair. El Idolo hulking up, slams Brody, nails a split-legged moonsault. We got a near fall right there. Andrade misses the knees, gets his head taken off with a wicked clothesline from hell. Cannonball, but Andrade kicks out of that. Back elbow drops Brody like a sack of potatoes. Brody is then dropped awkwardly onto the ring post. Andrade nails a hammerlock DDT, pins... And wins against Brody King. Goddamn. Picks up the... He goes up to nine points now. And that's a that might be the biggest win Andrade has had in AEW. He's up to nine points now. Brutal match. Brutal match. Those chops for chops. They went... They did it a couple times where they just started throwing chops at each other. And it was gruesome. It was, it was beautiful. Thing of beauty. Crazy near falls. Just a great match between two very, very good wrestlers. Eight out of ten. Great match. Now we got Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho, the Golden Jets. They cut a promo, and they need to talk about the Big Bill and Ricky Stock's problem. Well, the tag team champions arrive. Kenny calling Bill soft. Just a little bit of a nudge right there. Not, not a little nudge, a hell of a nudge uh, towards Big Bill and his old partner, Enzo Amore. And don't worry, they'll just say his name straight up in a minute. Ricky accepts the challenge for their title match. Golden Jets say the champs need a name, so they start throwing out some some pretty good names. I don't remember them right now, but they were good. And then they call Theory Bill's new Enzo Amore. Oh, fuck. There it is. Starks explodes, calling Kenny and Chris scumbags. Oh, oh, what a word. What a word. But seriously, like Enzo Amore, goddamn, man. That's when I first started getting back into wrestling around that time when he and Big Bill were on top of the world in the tag team in WWE. And man, did that guy ever fall hard from the top, man. Like, oof. Anyway, moving on. 
Timeless Tony join, joins commentary for Ruby Soho versus Riho. 619 and a crucifix bomb by Riho. Ruby nails no future, but Rio kicks out of that. Maybe one of two people who's ever kicked out of it. Pretty good. Rio suplexing Ruby hits the double knees in the corner for the W. Solid match. Rio shows her toughness, kicking out of the no future. Ruby, clean performance. You know, that that's pretty good. Well done. Well done. Tony entertaining on commentary. That might have been my favorite part. We got another Continental Classic match. We got Roosh with three points going up against Jay Lethal, who is eliminated at this point, so he's just trying to screw over Roosh. Lethal injection countered into a sleeper. Lethal taps out, fails to play spoiler to Roosh. Now he is up to six points and still alive in the tournament. Solid, quick little fight right here. Not much going on. Continental Classic match yet again. This time we got Jay White with six points versus Mark Briscoe. Again, he is eliminated, but he is just fighting for pride now. Out, or uh, sorry, Briscoe hits a froggy bow. Jay in trouble early. I think that might have been the second move he hit. Already hitting his finisher, so yeah. Briscoe suplexed over the ropes. That always scares me. Jay Driller is countered. White attacks Briscoe's knees. Blade Runner countered into a nasty suplex. White has the knees up for the ca- for the froggy bow. Nails a Blade Runner and grabs a must-need victory. Good effort right here from Briscoe. Absolutely no quit. He probably didn't even know he was eliminated. He's always going to fight as hard as he can, so good for that. White caught off guard, I would think, at the beginning, but he did rally back pretty good. Some hard strikes, a few nasty bumps in there as well. Good match, 7 at then. And White is now at 9 points. Now we got the main event Continental Classic match. This whole baby. Swerve Strickland at 9 points versus John Moxley also at 9 points. We get a nasty top rope DDT by Swerve. Like, oh my god. I don't even know. I don't even, I, Moxley could be and probably is concussed. Like, he just dumped himself right on his head. No hands. It was vicious. Mox relentless attack wearing down Swerve's bad shoulder. Moxley shoves Swerve off of the top. Rough fall to the floor for Swerve. Hits a curb stomp. Locks in an arm bar, but Swerve manages to get out of that. Moxley goes for a chair. Swerve stomps Moxley onto the chair. Top rope stomp with a terrible camera angle angle right there. Oh, they just made it look so... Like, he missed it. Like, you know, he's not going to really stomp in Moxley's head from 12 feet in the air, but... Jeez, that fucking camera angle really made it look bad. And I think it was so bad. It looks like maybe at this, like, Moxley has to kick out. Like, I don't, like, there's a lot of conversation going on on the ground there. Moxley kicked out. Seemed really confusing. And then Moxley goes for a roll-up. He steals the W right here. And yeah, Swerve's shoulders were up. The referee misses it. So this finish was kind of fucked up. I don't know. Something seemed wrong. It was still a good match, but... I don't know, that that finish definitely didn't seem right. Swerve selling was really good. Those rough bumps, that fucking DDT off the top rope was horrific. And the near falls were on point. Moxley, super aggressive in this one. 7.5 out of 10. I was a little bit disappointed. Like, it's still a good match, but you got Strickland and Moxley going up against each other. Is this the first time they've done it? I can't recall, but, well, man, I was salivating when this one got got going, but didn't quite hit the mark just yet. Doesn't mean they're done with each other. They can still fight many more times, and I hope they do. And then a group of masked men have Hangman in the parking lot. Oh, no. They smash him onto a windshield. Well, at least now we know it's not Hangman Adam Page. He has eliminated himself from contention of who is the masked man so we still don't know who the heck it is i i still think it's samoa joe or something but yeah that's the end of the show good dynamite lots of tournament matches out there a lot of them quality a couple of well the big main event one was like disappointing but still good you know so there's that the golden jet segment were funny and this mask group mystery continues I'm, i'm pretty into it but we'll see where it goes seven and a half out of ten for dynamite really good show now we go over to Rampage. The winter is still coming in Arlington, Texas. We're starting with a trios tag team match. Orange Cassidy, Ross and Marshall Von Erich with Danhausen versus Menard Parker and Haggard. And you may notice that my voice is really nasally now because I'm getting sick. We'll power through it. <clears throat> Here we go. Orange is caught mid-air by Jake 
Orange counters that into a slum dog. The Von Eriks roll up Parker. Von Eriks win their debut in AEW. Solid showing here. Nice, some nice tag team moves from the Von Eriks. Cassidy doing his thing, obviously. Very entertaining. And then the JAS attack Orange, or sorry, the former JAS attack Orange and the Von Eriks. And then the legendary Kevin Von Eric arrives. Iron claws are applied by the Von Eriks, and Texas goes nuts. Cool moment right here for the Von Eric family. And they have that movie coming out called Iron Claw. I'll definitely be checking that one out, but uh, it's going to be a sad story. Moving on, we get a rare moment of respect shown from Jay Lethal towards Mark Briscoe. Both of them have zero points in the tournament, but both are going to put it all out there no matter what. Moving on, we got the Don Callis family, Pup 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 Powerhouse and Fletcher. They squash a couple guys named Titan. Effective use of a squash match here, drawing some more heat. Don cuts a promo, getting booed to oblivion by Texas. Callis talks shit about the Golden Jets, Chris and Kenny. Now, my wife showed me a photo um, from Kenny Omega saying he was in the hospital and he's going to be away for a while. Now, none of the AEW shows acknowledge that this week, so I, I don't really know what's going on with Kenny Omega, but that sucks. Ruby and Soraya have yet another argument backstage. Why are these two even friends anymore? I don't know what's going on with that. We got Anna J going up against Red Velvet next. Menard arrives to assist Anna, who locks in the choke. Velvet forced to tap out, and yeah, that's the end of the match. Did not need the shenanigans from Menard in this match. I mean, Anna J was fine. A uh, pretty solid performance from both women, just meh. And now it's the main event. Trio's tag team match. Top flight, Dante and Darius Martin, plus action and Treddy versus Vikingo, Commander, and Penta. Good God, this is going to be crazy. Everybody taking nasty bumps on the apron. That was awesome. Just everybody taking a turn. Thumbs up for that. All six get into a chop off into the middle of the ring. And then a big old brawl takes place. Everybody's down. Thumbs up for that. Top flight in action. Hit the spinning triple team bomb thingy on Commander for a huge W. Man, that was awesome. That was an awesome main event. Non-stop. Highlight real high flying action for sure. Wicked bumps. Throwing some heat in this match. Some of those chops had some, had some, oh yeah, they had it. Great to see Top Flight at full power again. I missed this. Eight and a half out of ten. This was awesome. And that's the end of the show. Fine Rampage overall. The Von Eric stuff was cool. And the main event was fantastic. Other than that, it was just, you know, kind of eh. But I still like the show overall. I'm going to give it a seven out of ten. Now, I believe that winter is still coming for Collision in Texas, Arlington, Texas. And we're starting out the show with Continental Classic Tournament match. Claudio Castanoli, three points, versus Andrade, who has nine points. Andrade counters Claudio Sharpshooter into the figure four. Hits an avalanche rolling powerbomb. Nails the corner knees, but Claudio kicks out of all that noise. Referee busy dealing with the turnbuckle. Claudio kicks Andrade in the wiener, nails a neutralizer for a big W, and Claudio stays alive. He is up to six points now in a really good opening match. Nice counters, stiff strikes, the back elbow from Andrade. Oh, God. One of my favorite moves. Always looks good. Always catches me off guard. Even if I see it coming, I'm like, oh, my God, that looked better than I ever thought it could be. Seven and a half at then. We have Abaddon going up against Jasmine Allure. Abaddon absorbs all the damage, destroys Jasmine with the Black Delilah, and then the lights go out. Julia Hart appears, teases Abaddon again, but Abaddon grabs Julia, gives her a whooping, and Sky Blue appears, teams up with Anna to beat down the Abaddon. Here comes Thunder Rosa. What? She ditches the Spanish announce team to help out Abaddon. So looks like... Thunder Rosa has finally returned. Now, was she on commentary? Was she on Spanish announced commentary the whole entire time? I didn't know that. Now we have the acclaimed. They are back after a few weeks off, looking for revenge on whoever attacked them. Top Flight appear looking for a shot at the trio's titles. Challenge accepted, so I guess revenge will be coming later. 
We have an international championship match. Orange Cassidy defending against Brian Keith. Keith rising like the dead man takes Orange off of the top rope. Hits a sweet stunner. Orange kicks out of that. Rolls Keith into a trap. Roll up pins and retains. Keith a fun mix with Orange Cassidy entertaining match. Keith like... I don't know, he's got a really strange gimmick. He's like a cowboy, renegade kind of thing. He could take a lot of damage and get right back up, but it was a fun, entertaining match. Brian's stiff shots, especially that chop that he threw. Immediately, <clears throat> Cassidy's whole chest was like orange, so that was, a, that was a hard chop. Orange resilient, as always, and entertaining. 7 out of 10. We have a very beaten up FTR. They cut a promo on House of Black, calling them out for a match. House of Black appear on screen. Tell FTR to join them for some reason. The fuck? No one loves cash. And then they burn a photo of Dax's family. Oh, dear. FTR instantly to attend. Mostly Dax. He runs off to find House of Black. Solid segment. You know, <laughs> no one loves cash. That was, that, was, that was mean. Solid segment, though, using Dax's family again as fuel for this feud. Eh, you know, FTR, they're... AEW run for me just has kind of been there. Like, they've had some banger matches, but I kind of preferred them in WWE and something I thought I would never say. We move on. Tag team match. It's a Texas street fight. Willow Nightingale and Chris Statlander versus Diamante and Mercedes Martinez. Willow immediately cracked over the head with a bottle. She's a bloody mess. Diamante DDT'd onto a barbed wire baseball bat. How you doing? She's busted open. Statlander avalanche German suplexed onto a pile of chairs. My goodness. Willow blasts Diamante into a wooden board that does not break. That thing just, oh, solid piece of wood right there. Ouch. Willow's determination to break the board, though. She just fucking stomps on it and breaks it. Crowd goes nuts. Awesome moment. Glass and thumbtacks enter the equation. Oh, boy. Willow takes a wicked powerbomb through the table. Thumbs up for that. Statlander cracks Diamante with a steel chain. Pins and wins. They did sort of use the glass and thumbtacks. They did like a, fuck, like a code red or something into it, but they missed. I don't know. Doesn't really matter regardless. A brutal battle right here. Willow was an absolute animal in this match. Awesome performance from her. Thumbs up. Tons of weapons in this one, not shying away from that. You got blood, you got bu nasty bumps, just nasty bumps. Eight and a half out of ten, very good match. Brian Cage destroys some poor guy in a squash match, uh, fairly entertaining. And now we have a Continental Classic Tournament match. Eddie Kingston with three points versus Danny Garcia with no points, and he's eliminated. Nasty chops exchange, nasty fall for Eddie off of the apron, just nasty fall. Eddie, a silly amount of machine gun chops to Garcia, but Garcia continues to dance, kicks out of a spinning back fist. Eddie dumps Garcia on his noodle with a mean suplex, another back fist, pins and stays alive in the tournament. Heck of a fight right here. Garcia proving his toughness yet again, taking an ass kicking from Eddie. And Eddie, the ruthless chops and suplexes on display. Really good match. Seven and a half at then. And now it is main event time. Continental Classic match. Brian Danielson, six points versus Brody King, who has six points. Brody beating the absolute bejesus out of Danielson, targeting the broken, busted up face of Brian. Danielson works Brody's knee with a submission, nails a psycho knee out of nowhere, but Brody kicks out at one. Danielson runs into a brutal lariat near fall right there. Brian hits three more knee knees to barely put away King. Woof. Mercy. Both of these guys right here are animals. Brian takes a scary beating, man. Like, his orbital bone is, oh, it's just so brutal. Brody delivers the scary beating. Eight out of ten. Great main event. Didn't quite hit the level that I was hoping for. Like, I had a lot of hype going into this one, but I think the storyline of Danielson's orbital, orbital bone being destroyed is kind of more... Uh, prevalent in this match but that's the end of the show banger of a collision 
tournament heating up with every single match just gets better and better. The squash matches were even entertaining this week for some reason. Pay-per-view level wrestling throughout, like the fucking Texas street fight was insane. The main event was good, and Thunder Rosa is back in the equation. I think that is going to help out the women's division a lot. 8.5 out of 10 for Collision. And we'll head back to the WWE with SmackDown in Green Bay. Oh my god, it's Roman Reigns. He's actually here with the bloodline. I think it's because Roman was too busy uh, filming Aquaman, the, the second movie. So that's where he's been. Roman, feeling the Christmas spirit, praises Solo, gives him a big ol' hug. Like, whoa. J- Jimmy is jealous. And so is Randy Orton, who interrupts Roman's cheer. Orton challenges Roman to a match at the Royal Rumble. Roman says, nah, I'll retire you, dog." Randy listens to the voices they said that Roman crapped his pants and daddy's back. Those are the words that came out of his mouth. Did not expect that. That was hilarious. And then, and a rare Roman Reigns appearance. Looks to be heading into a match versus Orton at the Rumble. Uh, should be a decent feud leading up to that. Pretty good start here. We have the U.S. Championship Tournament match up next. Grayson Waller versus Carmelo Hayes, who's having a little appearance here from NXT. Waller, nice double stomp on Mello's back in the corner. Rolling flatline near fall. And then Grayson with this very unique DDT on Mello. It was in the corner, almost like an overdrive into a DDT. Very, very cool move. Mello springboard DDT, got a near fall there. Waller rolls right into a cold breaker. Nothing but net and Carmelo pins and advances. Oh, fuck yeah. They actually let him win. That's awesome. Usually when they bring up NXT guys, they make him lose. And then, you know, you're not going to make a star if you have a guy come up and just lose all the time. Dumb. But he wins here. That's awesome. Good selling here from both men. Waller, I've never seen a DDT quite like that. Very impressive. And a good showing here for Mello. Took damage, but he was able to come back and win. 7 out of 10. Good shit. We have Orton and LA Knight. Yeah. They have a little discussion backstage. Basically boiling down to, you stay out of my way, I'll stay out of your way. Yeah. All right. U.S. Championship Tournament match up next. Kevin Owens versus Austin Theory. Theory, Fisherman suplexes Kevin on the apron. Youch. Theory, Wicked Springboard, Spanish Fly. That was sick. Owens, Avalanche, Fisherman, Buster, Cannonball, and a Swanton Bomb. Near fall right there. The stunner is countered. Theory kicking Owens' broken hand. And then Kevin realizes that he's wearing a cast. So he cracks Theory in the face because that's legal. For some reason, the referee looked right at him. He said, that's cool. Uh, Theory is knocked out cold. Kevin pins and advances. (laughs) Man, I don't know what is going on, but Waller and Theory must be working together coming up with some of these awesome moves they've been pulling off this week. That was good. Banger match as well. Good back and forth. Nice pace. Theory looks strong. And Kevin Owens, my boy, always good. Seven and a half at then. Kevin Owens and Mello meet backstage. Mello wants to make his mark on Kevin next week. Oh, baby, that should be a fun match. And, okay, so we have a little update here for Charlotte Flair. So she was injured last week on in that very nasty fall off the top rope. Lands on her fucking head, but she also, like, hits her leg off the rope, and that really messed up her knee. So she is going to be out long term. And I would also like to say my bad for being harsh on their match last week. When I watched it live, they did not show any replays of the injury that Charlotte had. So I was like... Confused, Ollie says, oh, Charlotte fell on her noodle. And then the match was just like, fucked up. So, oh, right. My bad. So, Charlotte is hurt. We have damage control. Uh, video shows Bailey back in the good books again, but for how long this time? We'll find out. Kabuki Warriors, Asuka and Kairi Zane versus Mia Yim. I refuse to call her Michin or whatever the hell they're calling her. And Selena Vega. Vega and Yim attack the Warriors before the bell. Selena misses a 619, locked in the Oscar lock, but Selena manages to get out. And then Sane ends Selena with a Bama Slamma on the announce table. Oh, that looks so painful. Bailey arrives at the right time to knock Mia off the top rope. Insane elbow, and the Kabuki Warriors win. We figured it out, everybody. We figured it out. 
Selena can have longer matches if she's in a tag team. So there we go. Have her be in a tag team. She can finally be in a match that's over four minutes. Not a bad pairing as well with Mia. This, this tag match was solid. It was all right. Main event time. Randy Orton versus Jimmy Uso. Orton going vintage on Jimmy. He's setting up the RKO. Solo pops out, startles Randy just a little bit. LA Knight, yeah. To the rescue, stops Solo. Orton nails the RKO for the victory. Long, slow pace, Randy Orton classic right here. Roman arrives, gets in the ring with Randy, and they get it on, King. Randy winning until Jimmy gangs up on Orton. LA Knight helps out Randy, yeah. And then the bloodline outnumber the good guys. Who's going to help them? It's AJ Styles. Phenomenal forearm out of nowhere. Takes out Roman Reigns. AJ Styles then blasts LA Knight in the face. Whoa, still got some bad blood there. Randy is like, whatever. Poses for the crowd and the show ends. Pretty good SmackDown right here. Couple quality matches. AJ Styles is back. The roster seems healthy a little bit except for charlotte flair and roman makes an appearance he sets up a rumble match yeah not bad seven out of ten for smackdown and we'll finish it out with the three stars of the week we have a loaded up three stars this week um the deadline pay-per-view wwe's or nxt's that is also in contention for this week's three stars so a couple shout outs before we do the official three stars Got to shout out Brody King versus Andrade on Dynamite. That shit was excellent. I would also shout out the Brody King and Brian Danielson match as well. That was also excellent. And I also have to shout out Top Flight Action Andretti versus Commander Penta and Vikingo on Rampage if you want. That was probably the best high flying match of the week. They were going all over the place. Both, all six men in that match are extremely good at high flying, and they all were doing it. So if you like that, you're going to really like that match. Now for the official three stars of the week. Starting with the third star goes to Diamante and Martinez versus Statlander and Willow Nightingale in the Texas death match on collision. My goodness, this was a battle using all the weapons. It was awesome. Good enough for the third star this week. Second star goes to the men's Iron Survivor match at Deadline. Iron Survivor quickly becoming one of my favorite match types ever. It is super cool. There's a lot of creativity that can go on during that match. And I thought the men did a great job with their match as well. But first star goes to the women's Iron Survivor match at Deadline. I thought theirs was better. They had bigger spots. They had... The carnage in the penalty box alone was just so fucking good. I loved it. All the women were amazing in that match. You had breakout performances from Kalani Jordan and Blair Davenport. I mean, oh my god. Everybody was excellent in that match. One of my favorite matches I've seen this whole entire year. And that's the show, everybody. Thank you so much for listening and or watching. You're awesome. You want to be even more awesome, make sure you're hitting that review button and liking and doing all that stuff helping out the little guy and all that stuff in terms of this week's podcast it's going to um i think depend on how bad i get sick i can already feel it coming on pretty pretty strong right here so we'll uh we'll see how it goes this week if i'm able to power through it or not i'll uh update everybody on twitter and stuff like that all those links are in the description i upload all these episodes to youtube on the gamer gx videos uh, YouTube channel. The link is in the description. There's an email address if you want to send in uh, questions or concerns or anything like that. I would love if uh, y'all would send in some questions related to video games, wrestling, or hockey. That would be awesome. I'd love to answer all your questions live on the podcast. It'd be a lot of fun. And hey, I guess I hit a hundred episodes here of the WrestleCast. So, um, Thank you, everybody, so much for listening. If you've listened uh, somehow to all 100 episodes of the WrestleCast, you are special. You're a very special person in a good way, in a very good way. It means a lot to me. I uh, did not expect to uh, crack 100 episodes so fast, but here we are. You know, the WrestleCast is um, gets a lot more work than the other podcasts. I'm about 30 episodes ahead of, of the GamerCast and the and the HockeyCast because some with the wrestling, sometimes I do two episodes per week, but been a ton of fun. It's uh, added a lot to my wrestling viewership. I love 
taking notes for the show and reviewing the matches and discussing it. It's a lot of fun. I really do enjoy it. So hopefully here is to another hundred more episodes of the GX WrestleCast. And yeah, so thank you again, everybody, for listening. If you listen to all of them, you're especially awesome. And we'll be back again soon with some more GX PlusCast. Thank <laughs> you.